Hello and welcome to the Monday, July 31st, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start out with some diaries that we published over the weekend. Uh, first of all, on Sunday, I wrote about a sort of interesting phishing scam. Maybe we want to call it smishing, but what's different here is that it's not actually using an SMS message, but an Apple iMessage, which does require an Apple device to actually send the message. Also, some authentication. It came from a phone number in the Philippines. Sadly, they didn't accept uh, my request for a FaceTime connection. It did impersonate the United States Postal Service. Overall, the message was done reasonable. I have to say not perfect, but uh, I've seen worse. It was also very picky in that it only accepted the mobile version of Safari. If you came with any other browser or even the desktop version of Safari, you were redirected to the authentic USPS website. This is likely also going to help with not having the phishing page removed because, of course, uh, this makes it less likely that a casual sort of inspection of the URL uh, leads directly to the phishing page. And the question that has often been asked and Xavier is asking again in his diary this weekend was uh, why it hackers uh, don't pay more attention to IPv6 or maybe they do and we're just not really looking for it. Xavier found a malicious Python script that actually specifically looks into establishing whether or not the particular host that has infected has IPv6 connectivity. They actually do have a Sans a research paper coming hopefully next month or so that'll look into this in particular uh, for NTP. Of course, you're not going to see a lot of sort of the blind scanning like we see with Mirai bots and such, but uh, for hosts that are resolving to IPv6 addresses, of course, you may see some IPv6 uh, scans. We do collect actually a little bit IPv6 data with our sensors, don't really publish much of it because looks like so far most of the data that we do see is uh, definitely sort of false positives. But then again, the type of sensors we do have are really more sensitive to sort of the random scanning, which definitely is much less effective for IPv6. Another sort of interesting script that Xavier found this weekend actually used steganography. And this was actually what I sort of considered a real steganography. Now, there's a lot of attacks that people call steganography, where basically some malicious code is just being appended to an image. Here, actually, individual byte values of the image were manipulated. And then a Python script that Xavier ran into loaded the image and then extracted the data from from the image. Uh, pretty interesting also to see this just uh, done in a Python uh, like this. And Datadog Security Labs uh, published a blog post documenting a common misconfiguration if you are using OpenID Connect in order to authenticate GitHub Actions uh, to your AWS system. The idea here is that GitHub Actions can interact uh, with uh, AWS and of course assume specific IAM roles within AWS. This is actually overall a pretty good way to sort of authenticate. You avoid the use of sort of long-lived static credentials. However, as you are configuring uh, AWS to accept uh, these GitHub uh, tokens, the problem is that you need to specify what repository can actually use uh, this particular role. If you don't do this, then essentially any GitHub repository gets access to the role, which of course uh, could easily be fatal if you do allow other GitHub repositories to authenticate uh, to your AWS environment. Well, if you didn't get around to patch the Ivanti mobile iron vulnerability this weekend or before the weekend, you are now definitely too late. There is now a public proof of concept out there for this vulnerability. As expected, the exploit is actually 
pretty straightforward. You pretty much just have to know what URL to use. There's a little Python script that implements it. As far as I can tell, it looks authentic to me. I don't have a version of Mobile Iron here to actually test it. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.